Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together, take on various topics that tend to occur when one embarks on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I make interactive things. I teach UX and creativity, and I also coach about it as well. Coaching. I have a feeling we're going to talk a little bit about coaching today, Rob. It's good to see you, by the way. Nice to, to <laughs> do another to show with you. Too. Um, but uh, I, the topic for this week, I think uh, I'm, I'm going to ask for your coaching. <laughs> um, uh, no, I think that's great. I, I think, you know, you, it's, and it's, it's, I think it's exciting to do some kind of, you know, sharing like that and, and demonstrating a process, but it's not like that coaching is, is now you'll see some prescriptive thing happen. It's good. It's going to be another, it's going to be a, a different kind of conversation. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. True. It's yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and yes, we are very, very allergic to prescription uh, on the Lena Tart cast. If you're new to the show, we we typically we record uh, for an hour and uh, the first half is us talking about what the topic looks like when we're engaging with it. And then the second half is how we think about the topic. And the topic this week, and I'll hit the music in a second, is finding momentum midway through a thing. So it's October. What is this? This is October 10th. We are uh, a third of the way through the Inktober challenge or season of creative challenges. There's a lot of other ones going on. Um, and we talked about this a few episodes ago, like hacking creative challenges. Uh, you have a workshop on this about hacking creative challenges. We should mention too, while we're on that topic, um, which is at Skillshare and Gumroad linked in the show notes. Um, but I, this year to hack the my my Inktober was I decided I was going to try to write a graphic novel pitch, write and draw a graphic novel pitch in 31 days, an hour a day. And, you know, 10 days in, highs and lows already starting to happen, uh, hitting, hitting points where the work gets hard, the work gets frustrating. And then I mark it in my ETP. There's my hour that I got to do this thing. Am I satisfied with it? I don't know. And then I look down at the calendar. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's 21 days left to do this thing. <laughs> uh, so it's like momentum becomes an issue, right? Like finding ways to keep myself not only motivated, but keeping like feeling like this is building into something and that I'm not just sort of like throwing things at a wall. Um, that, that that becomes part of like the, the the psychological toll of doing this thing, right? Uh, yeah, really. It's there's a lot of different ways that you can do. Like you can show up at at your creative um, efforts, your time, your your allotment. You're juggling different projects, different hats. Your your whatever day job, side gigs, what have you. Uh, you got a chunk of your day to do a thing. And how do you show up? And how, what does it feel like? What happened? What's the outcome? What did you expect? Did you meet that? I, and it, the whole story ends up, um, you carry something with you at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then how about we play the music to bridge us over into talking about the topic in earnest? What do you say? Sounds good. <laughs> do something to keep motivated. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a really good one. Because uh, because that's that's what a creative challenge is. It's actually a music montage where you just like do like little tiny snippets of effort over the course of about two and a half minutes, and then you're suddenly a master at the thing. Ooh, yeah, that's, nothing's more palatable than abstract pain and great accomplishment from the abstraction. <laughs> that's good. That's okay, so um, let's see. What what have I been going through with this creative challenge? Um, yeah. uh, there have been a couple times where um, I'm oh gosh, what am, what am I going through? What am I worried about? Um, I don't know. What what are you wondering about? I guess we'll start with what you're wondering about first, Rob, and then like hit me with some questions, and I can respond to those. Okay, so the. Um, I'm guessing that like, like, tell me about the, the, like maybe a high and low summary as far as the, your journey so far. Like when you, you're, you're about 10 days in, 
and you, you do check in with yourself quite a bit, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, what, what has that looked like, um, in let's say the first two, three days, the next two, three days, and then the next two, three days, like little pieces of your journey so far. Yeah. Um, so I have been documenting this entire journey on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jersey. And that I'm actually, I think that was a smart move. I mean, one, I'm like, I'm generating content, which is so important, but, uh, it's also a really great daily exercise to collect my thoughts. I, 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 I'm creating a reflection that's meant to be transmittable, right? This isn't just me like grabbing random thoughts on my ETP, emergent task planner, davidsay.com. This is me saying like, okay, what happened today? How am I feeling about it? And how can I construct those, like relay that information to an audience? So I have been doing almost daily journaling on this. Um, and highs has been like, um, there were a couple days where, uh, with one of the characters, character designs was really not happening right away. I was really struggling with like, what do I do? There was this horse character that I posted on Instagram and then did the final one on Patreon. And I wanted it to be a, a, a horse barbarian. And it was important to me that this, this character telegraphs barbarian. Well, but I also want the horse to like operate like a horse. Like I don't want to do like a horse with people hands, like Bojack horseman. I want it to like move around like a horse, but it's a barbarian. Um, and I was doing lots of sketches in my sketchbook and, and then nothing was really feeling like it was connecting. And then I texted Zach Gialongo, who, you know, he, 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 this is his currency as barbarians and, and wizards and elves. And I was like, well, what am I, what am I missing here? And he's like, oh, you, you've got armor all over this character with barbarians. Think organics, think bones, think, uh, skins, think, uh, clubs, that kind of thing. I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. And so. I landed on this design where it's like this horse has like the bottom jaw of a wolf over top of her bottom jaw. Um, it's like, 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 and I was thinking like, like a reverse of General Kale from Willow. Do you remember that movie? A little bit. Um, General, there's also like the a, Kurrigan from Highlander War in, in, a, in, a, in a tiny bit of a montage had a very skullish uh, helmet. Okay. Yeah. But like, yeah, you think of like a it's, skull helmet. It's like yeah. it, it, it totally delivers like scary death motif kind of thing and i was like well how can i play with that i was like well what if instead of having a skull over her face she has like like paint on her face like barbarian berserker paint but then she's got like this this like wolf's jaw tied over top of her jaw and i was like that that's a cool look i'm i'm really happy with that design um so like those were the highs like when like i feel like i don't want to say i'm inventing but I'm putting ideas together in a way that feels creative and it surprises me and it delights me. And it feels like there's some, like I'm moving forward with something I'm collecting good ideas. And when I put the ideas all together in a row, like I put all the drawings of the characters on my desk and looked at them all together. I'm like, this, this feels cohesive. This feels like I'm not being too wild with what I'm doing. It's, it's got like some kind of like a shared identity in that it's a a fantasy story. Um, Lowe's were, Dude, writing that outline, writing the outline, I went through three drafts of like, I did like a full brain dump of the whole thing uh, into Google Docs, just like type, 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 type. And I tried not to edit myself. I'm just like, just get the ideas out there. Just tell the story like you're telling a friend the story. And then like looking at that and trying to like do a second draft where it's like, okay, well, what a, this is what I said. Now, what was I trying to say? <laughs> As I look at this mess of thoughts, like what what what's the guiding principles and the guiding thoughts in this thing? That was a lot of work. And then finally, you know, it's like I I sat down like I, this is this is too much for me to sift through an hour at a chunk. So let's just sit down and like write out bullet points of like what are the big ideas here. And so like like I threw out the first two drafts and then just sat down. I, they I I shouldn't say I threw them out. They were fruitful in that. It helped me say aloud what I think the story is about. So then I could collect, you know, here's four four chunks of five, four sections of five points each. So 20 points. How can I turn that into a one-page outline? And that took a few different revisions. Um, so, and, and I guess the lowest point for me is that I'm discovering that I have a lot of insecurity about writing prose. I'm I I don't feel very confident in writing text copy. Um, I I know how to construct an, a page of comics to communicate what I'm trying to say, but trying to describe that in a way that evokes the image but uses language in a playful way, 
um, is really tough for me. And I have a habit of writing in passive voice. Um, and so I think one of the lows was really confronting that feeling and pushing past it to just commit to doing more revisions. I, I wanted, part of me wants to say like, oh, well, Jersey, you were just being lazy when you didn't want to do more revisions. I don't think it was that. I think it was really that I didn't feel like I had what it took to do those revisions. And then once I pushed through and did more passes and caught the times I was using passive voice and found more playful language, I was like, okay, this is, I'm proving to myself that I can do it. But there was a real, there was a, there was a moment there where I was feeling really disheartened about the thing and I didn't want to do it. Um, so there's, there's like a, a, a broad look at what I've been going through in this creative challenge. It's really good context, right? That uh, I imagine a lot of us also feel in different aspects of our creative process. Uh, for me in particular, I, I went through a, a time. I, 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 I think that, you know, it's fine. And wherever you are in your art, whatever you use, whatever you don't use, you get your art out, you get it to your audience. That's awesome. And if you encounter things that like, for me, I encountered a very similar thing with, with writing. And um, like I started um, my webcomic Art Geek Zoo and uh, hit like this really stressful crisis as far as how do I keep going? And every, cause every single page was its own um, set of, uh, emotional turmoil is, you know, like whatever comes out, it could have been just, you know, like a, um, kind of a prop joke, but it still was kind of hard for like, I didn't want to overuse words like hellish, but it was not easy to the point where I kind of talked myself into saying, well, I really need a, a writing partner on this. And I ended up, um, uh, collaborating with a writing partner, um, uh, Pete Gilbertson for a good, a good chunk of time, a few, then, then realized that, I don't know, after seeing him do it for a while and knowing like, yeah, it's hard and he has his own way to do it. But um, now I'm realizing that I've added a complication to what I wanted to do in the first place as a way to, as a crutch to not work on it, <laughs> work on that hard thing. So I tried to avoid it and I realized that I didn't want to avoid it and ended up facing it over time. And I found my own way of, of, uh, of like, I, I, that's when I did a ton of reading about, for, about writers on writing, that kind of thing. And then mm. did, did more practice, found the, that I landed on the whole, like, uh, uh, being at needing to be okay with revision was a huge thing for me as well. Like you said, you said those, something similar to that. And I thought, Ooh, that reminds me of time. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> what, um, okay. So, um, this whole, this section is called like when, when momentum spins out, like was there sort of a, um, what does the spin out look like? I mean, so that's the general progression you, you shared and, and this, are you, are you stopped at this point or where are you at? Where am I at today? Yesterday I was great. Yesterday I had a really good day. Uh, today it was kind of like a, uh, I don't know. Um, and but I, I, okay, so let me describe like when, when, when it spins on what that looks and feels like. Um, I have to say that probably a big part of it is the ticking clock. Um, the feeling of I'm giving myself an hour, you know, and we talked about whittling on the show how many times, right? Like whittling is a, like, just give yourself whatever time you can and put in that time show up and do it and then it will accumulate right um mm -hmm. i wrote my first graphic novel that way on my lunch break at my day job you know uh, 30 minutes out of whack for what two years and then i had a, a script um and i probably felt this way back then too but if, and i know it feels this way now is um when it does when it's not working very well within the first 20 minutes a, not a, I wouldn't say a panic, but an anxiety kicks in that, oh, crap, I only got 40 minutes left to do this thing, and I really have to punch out. I can't let this bleed into my other commitments, right? This is an extra thing I'm doing. I budgeted that hour, and that's really all I'm giving myself, and I feel like I can be pretty disciplined about that. But that discipline means that it's an inflexible uh, you know, uh, end time, and when it's not working and then you're facing the ambiguity of, well, how do I make it work? Um, 
am I going to have anything to show for my time today? Yes, I'm going to have something to show for my time today. Like All effort adds up to something, right? There'll be some kind of thought or discovery at the end of all that effort when I put it all together. But there's also this idea of, of this, this particular creative challenge. So I'm trying to ship something, a little piece that I can share every day. So that adds an extra. So there's the ticking clock and there's the whole, like, I got to have something. Um, and this... There was a sense that what I share should be some positive artifact, some positive artifact of accumulated effort, right? Uh, I can't share failure. Nobody wants to watch that show. <laughs> so I'm just explaining what was going on in my head, right? Like this is like this is the the psychology of of the spin out of like, well, gosh, um, it only took six days, and now I'm really not, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna putter out, and I'm not gonna have anything to deliver today. Mm, does that set me back the whole month, right? Like I tightly budgeted everything and I've got everything in these little time slots so that I got to ship this thing today. Otherwise, it's going to bleed into the next thing. And now I don't know how that's going to topple down the Jenga tower. So that that ambiguity of the first 20 minutes, it not working, leads, leads my brain down the spiral of anticipating all these problems, which takes me out of the moment of trying to solve the, the actual problem, right? Mm. <laughs> So you anticipating the problems kind of like um, maybe you're not going to reach today's outcome. Maybe you're not going to reach the collective outcome. And also the story you have to share isn't like uh, la 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 making thing. Woo hoo hoo. It's ah, I'm making this. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. But I should have shipped that day. It was a video me. of me just like typing like this at a computer and screaming. Right. <laughs> oh. Um, uh no I, I that was melodramatic for the purposes of comedy but yeah, I mean because of course but, I'm joking and being but, playful but no this but it is serious too like what you're describing and, and uh, the the um what I want to ask you is you know it's related to my workshop is uh it sounds like you've cranked a lot of variables to high difficulty right so where's where's the flexibility in your system that's what mm -hmm. I'm wondering uh, oh, because gosh. if you were that if you're that set on the timeline and you so you think about the what the classic uh, project management triangle right what so mm. you've got your 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 time resources and quality different ways different words for those big buckets but it's kind of like the um the the time and the attention you put into it or the skills right that are that are involved in the attention but the time that you've allotted over, you know, for, for sessions over what duration, but then, you know, and with the quality and the particular outcome or output, um, people post kinds of those triangles all the time, right? You know, you can get fast, cheap, or good. And yeah. Yeah. So um, it sounds like you're going for a triple there. And I don't know. That's, that's no, you're problem. right. You're, you, th that's, that's what I talked myself into here. I can pull up my, I actually did a spreadsheet for this. Um, so I budgeted out each day. So let's see, like, you know, Tuesday, the 1st of October, I was drawing pickles and I, I started out with character designs cause I knew that was something that was like, that was low risk. I, I felt confident I could ship in an hour, a pretty decent character design. Um, and, uh, it was when I got to outlining, it was when I got to like writing out the, the story that like the. Like I said, my confidence level dropped because I don't, I, I have, I know I've got an issue with how I think about myself as a writer is I don't think of myself as a prose writer. And so I talked myself out of attending to that with any kind of level of uh, enthusiasm, right? This is the thing I have to do, not a thing I want to do. Um, but flexibility, um, no, I didn't have a lot and I want to say that I I bought a, I bought a little flexibility by doubling up some of the character designs. So like one day I found I had like I was getting along faster than I thought I was going to. So I was like, well, I'm doing two today, um, and now I bought that hour that I can give to outlining, which that get, that did give me a little bit of space for that. Um, but no, there isn't a lot lot of um, flexibility with time. I need to talk to myself about the flexibility of the quality of the work because um, 
I was talking with my buddy Greg Shegel about the pickles design. I was like, yeah, it's it's pretty sloppy. I belted that thing out, like the drawing part, I belted out in like 15, 20 minutes. And then, you know, the painting part was like another 20 to 40 minutes. And Greg's like, you don't get to call this sloppy because there's really good construction underneath this. So like, yes, the lines are loose, but like you could tell a competent hand is at the wheel. It's so like, don't you don't get to say that. I'm, I'm revoking your privilege of saying that that's a sloppy drawing, right? Um, so I think part of it is this internal dialogue. And I think a lot of uh, visual creators suffer from this, at least they report this to me, is that not having a clear sense of... Um, the quality of the work you're making because you're holding yourself to a pretty high standard and realizing the difference between like good and good enough. Um, and not good enough is in the sense of dusting your hands and walking away from giving up, but good, good enough in, in that it's, you have enough mastery that this is, this is adequate for what you're trying to accomplish. Right. Um, mm. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's, that's a toughie because it's, it, I, from what I can observe, way more tension exists when you say I'm going to do both or I'm going to lock down all three, um, you know, the, the, the time quality and, and effort, all of it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's because how many projects it's just, there's always something that happens. Right. And then it's a matter of, cause we're kind of setting ourselves up for have like a, of it's like a, Circum circumstantial debt we're creating where it's like, I know I'm going to end up figuring this out at some point, but I'm going to try for this ideal. And that's yeah. it right? for, for now until now, until the point when, when, and now, then I'm, I accept some aspect of it. I don't know. Well, I, th I think too, that I've talked myself into a sense of wanting this to really be done at the end of 31 days. Like I really want out of a sense of not wanting to have to touch it again, out of a sense of, you know, a little bit of bragging rights. Wow, look what I did in, in 31 hours. I made a thing and it's it's ready to be shipped. Well, I could be, write a book about this now. You know, there, there's a sense of that kind of pressure behind it. Um, so, yeah, losing the sense of perspective of um, what, what, what am I trying to say? I guess I guess I'm losing sense of what my goal actually is, right? There's like this other narrator that shows up every day when I'm working who's saying, "Well, and this is going to be like a finished awesome thing." Well, was did that was that what I set out to do? I don't remember now. You know. Um So, I guess that's part of like why I wanted to talk with you about this is like I I think I lost track of what I'm actually trying to accomplish. I have a, a sentence written out, 31 day pitch challenge. Well, what does that mean exactly? I don't know. Um, because yeah, when you, when you point it out that way, good, fast, and um, was it good, fast and cheap or whatever. Right. Uh, then yeah, I, I have set myself up to fail if I'm trying to tick all those boxes in an extra thing every day. It's tough because this is where um, I like playing around with the idea of a, um, it's like, are you set up to be, it's just funny. I, I play with metaphors that I know nothing about. So I'm not a stuntman. I'm just going to say that. Um, but but you have watched the fall guy. <laughs> I have watched stunt, stunt person, stunt people on TV accomplish many great things, right? Um, you know, all genders and identities doing stunts. And the point is a stunt. And you, and me as an observer, I see the stunt and I'm like, oh, phew, stunt, that was amazing. Um, but really, in order to set that stunt up for success, it re the, like the professional aspect of it was tons of planning and, and expertise and uh, failing small to make adjustments to, to accomplish this other thing and bringing in the, the other disciplines to triangulate to know that this is set up for success this stunt can happen. So really the, like the triangle for, uh, for time is really stretched out way the heck over. Like there's this, and, and like I'm observing that's the triangle imagining that it's all short, but really it's super stretched out. And uh, because so much preparation mm. has led up before, um, you know, to the um, and like pre early planning strategy and then the execution, which is um, shorter and can happen within tight constraint constraints because of all the preparation. Mm. And sometimes I will try to sign on for a stunt that I haven't fully prepared all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but I'm not a stunt person, but I like the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> But Mythbusters is a fun show. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and, and so that, I guess that was another thing that I really wrestled with when the down parts happened is like I was saying earlier, it's like, well, you're only supposed to share the good stuff, right? Nobody wants to listen to me whine about like, oh, who knew this was going to be hard? But if I set up something with like enough fragility that there's probably going to be failure, actually any project I've ever done, there's going to be failure at, at some point or another along the line. And uh, realizing that that was a transmittable part of this thing, I think, helped me keep going, um, keep that momentum. Is that no, the 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 not being sure is 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 part of that journey that's worth sharing. That was today, today's uh, entry that I, I posted. I'm like, look, I'm not sure about this one. I had my hour. I used it. You know, this is what I got to show for my hour. Here's how I'm thinking about how this might not be done. You know. And this is why I'm wrestling with this. Um, which, hmm. Now I have to wonder. I don't know if we're getting into second half of the show already, but I wonder I think if we're like, super close. I think. Yeah. I think okay. We're in there, because yeah, you've you've done a great job unpacking the whole uh, the circumstance around spinning out on the momentum. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. Let's talk about how like we find momentum and keep going with momentum. All right. So take a uh, minute and a half break. Is that okay with you? That sounds wonderful. Okay. <laughs> we have a huge and a, and a very good reason to, to, to take this uh, break. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, take a breath. And uh, we're going to thank some people who make this show possible. Those people, those folks who support us on Patreon. Yes, patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you say, I believe in Jersey, I believe in Rob and what they do. I want to make their show more sustainable. I'm going to contribute as little as a dollar a month. And uh, let's thank five people for doing exactly that. Good to be curious. Thank you. Good to be curious for believing in us and what we do. You can find them on Twitter at good to be curious. And Jodels Pox. Thank you, Jodels, for supporting us. You can find Jodels on Twitter at jbombartist. Also, Chris Watkins. Thank you, Chris. It means a lot to us. And Cameron Callahan. You can find Cameron on Twitter at Cam Callahan. And finally, Tim F. Thank you, Tim. You can join them all at patreon.com slash leantart where you will find every show we make as well as the extra leans, the shows we record once a month and they're only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you take the discussion wherever you want. Um, and in the extra leans are usually me and Rob just like sort of riffing on an idea live. It's like sort of us putting together a Lean Into Art episode on the fly and usually just starting with a prompt where Rob says, Hi, Jersey. <laughs> and then we take it from there. And we always find something. So you can find those those at patreon.com slash lean into art. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us there. It means a lot to us. It really does. And thanks so much for those of you who will join them. Okay. Let me uh, hit some music. So changing it up. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Punch the castle, get some Dragon Balls. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, Joseph's in the chat and uh, responding to things that I was saying earlier about like feeling like I've lost what my, my goal was, and he's uh, suggesting, I think you said you wanted to have something in hand for when editors came around, and this was a good way to do it in a short time. So, yeah. I, maybe I did have that sense from the beginning that I was trying to create something that was pretty done, that was pretty close to done, and see if I could do it in 31 days. Um, but I, I, I think, if I remember right, I kept that cautionary language of, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's it's so funny how, like, well, I mean, it's like any game. You want to win, right? Like, I keep thinking of, the example I always go to in my head is um, Quadraxis in Metroid Prime 2, um, this giant four-legged walker mini-boss who is just a beast. Like, I couldn't do it. I, I tried for years to beat that guy, and finally I had to go to a younger friend. I'm like, can you do this for me? Because <laughs> I can't get past <laughs> this guy. Uh, I watched I watched playthroughs. I, I, I read tutorials, and I'm like, I just, I can't. It's too, it's too big. It's too hard. Uh, and when my friend beat it for me and I got, you know, the, the, the cool annihilator beam and everything, I'm like, yeah, this doesn't feel as good. 
<laughs> I wanted the epic win face, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, that's, that's rough. So yeah. yeah, getting that, that little, that pass some, ah, oh, that's interesting. Cause I'm, yeah. I'm excited in, in a similar way. Maybe I will feel some kind of loss or what have you, but, uh, but for some, some games that it's, it's like, it, it's nice to have a dialogue. So if the game is like a project, how can you have a dialogue with the project to dynamically adjust the difficulty at times where it's not like, oh, now I'm playing it on easy mode forever and I no longer feel connected anymore, right? Like, well, what if I can just back off a little bit right now for this boss thing that doesn't feel reasonable in, you know, how do I, how do I adjust and, and then keep moving and maybe crank it up again later on? And, and if I get that, that excitement and when it's because there is some kind of like games are funny the the way they present these these optional obstacles and and challenges for us where um i'm excited to try this kind of what you just said uh with the um what's the latest spider-man called uh ps4 oh. and because because i i got the game i played it for a little bit i enjoyed it i got to this sort of um it's uh someone's captured in a museum thing and it's kind of Metal Gear Solid, sneaky like. Mm. It, it, the controls get a little bit com more complicated. They they introduce simple and it gets more and more complicated. And and it, it's at the complicated peak in this situation. And then I didn't have time to play it for a few weeks or even mm. a month and a half. I forget. Right. I come back to it. Pfft, suck. Can't get it done. Uh, I just utterly show. I, I became inept Spider-Man intern in in weeks. <laughs> and, and not that it was. I don't know maybe even um not even was well, whatever interns can be great whatever I'm, I'm i'm being jokey right but um it felt really bad and i thought well now what now what anyway but turns out i heard from a friend that i can change the difficulty on the fly and it's not permanent so oh that's awesome what funny, a cool should... thing to introduce yes oh my gosh if that was in metroid prime 2 i would have enjoyed that game a lot more um, yeah. oh, and that's, that's an interesting thought too, is like thinking about your project. How can you dial back the difficulty and then turn it back up when you're at a point where you have more capacity or more presence of mind? Um, the thing, the thing that I, th I think is challenging about doing an on like a monthly challenge like this, where it is time box in such a way, it's like we get an hour and day is that, um, you're not always mentally in the place that you need to be in order to do it, right? Like I've had I've had projects where it's like it's really like you know spans a couple of days. I'm gonna work on this thing for like three or four days, and like it's been so exciting that I get up and I just want to get right to work on it. Like I don't even want to shower. I don't even need coffee. Just let me at it. I want to do this thing, right? That's happened before, but that's very infrequent. Like my my uh, enthusiasm for a thing ebbs and flows, right? There are days where I'm just like, um. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm disciplined and committed, and I will do it. But like, I'm not really like joyously relishing in this, right? Um, and then when it's a creative challenge, where there's like at least in this particular one that I'm describing, where there's different kinds of skill sets that I'm bringing to it every day. Today I'm gonna do more drawing and more thinking about character. The next day I'm gonna think about outline and plot and theme, and then maybe this next day I'm gonna design some elements that are going to appear in the picture in the in the story you know i got thumbnailing coming up and i have to thumbnail five pages right it's, it's asking me to do different things at different times and those all have different um <sighs> different levels of enthusiasm different energy commitments uh different levels of mastery and so now how do i manage that how do i show up with the pro like the uh, appropriate amount of enthusiasm energy mindset attention so that I can jump right in and put in my 60 minutes and feel like it was time well spent. Right. That's, uh, you bring up an interesting situation and is this, would you like to do some coaching on this? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So how you doing Jersey? Um, today let's, I'll do the thumb scale. Um, mm -hmm. this is like not awesome. This is super awesome. I'm like, just above the middle, like right there. All right. Right on, right on. So what, uh, in that sort of middle situation, um, I understand you want to do a coaching session and what were you thinking you wanted to talk about today? 
Um, I I want to get back in touch with the um, enthusiasm of the mission, but I want to be able to, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure I understand what my mission is anymore. I'm lost in the weeds of doing the thing. I have a schedule. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure why I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm, wow. So is that, um, so what would you like to, to dig into with that? I mean, those are, there's a lot of, lot of facets there. And then you seem to have a lot of, um, there was a, like a big opening when you, when you hit that. I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. why I'm doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I doing this thing? Like, I guess. So what would make this yeah. a successful uh, session? Like, what would you like to take away from it? Uh, I would like to feel like what I'm doing with this thing is meaningful enough to me that I don't feel like I'm wasting my time and that I don't feel like, okay, as I think about it harder, think about harder, think about it more. Um, I'm doing a lot of thinking about like, who is this for? Who's going inter to interact with this thing? And I'm making decisions based on what I think that their assumptions are going to be. I'm making decisions based on um, uh, what I think is appropriate in 2019 versus, say, 1983. I'm thinking about things. Um, I'm thinking about a lot of other parties. And there's a, there's a voice in my head that says, dude, just do what makes you emotionally, psychologically wild. Go to that. Um, and then that will, that will be transmitted to the audience and then, but then the other part of me that's negotiating says like, yeah, well, I've done that before and I've, and I've had stuff not connect and had stuff not sell. Maybe I should do a little bit of hypothesizing about like what I think is like what's moving the market right now and how can I tailor my presentation to say, yes, this fits in with that, right? This is excellent for that that place in the market, like in, in pitches, they want you to do like read alikes. What is your book like? Where would we shelve it? Um, so I mean like built into the structure of a pitch is that thinking. Um, so like I get, I think what partly gets me frustrated is thinking about, I get resentful when it gets hard because I think about, well, who am I even doing this for? Right. Um, if I wasn't thinking about an audience and I was just playing, it probably would be a lot more fun. Um, so, uh, what makes you think of it in that way? Um, the fun, what makes yeah. me think of it is fun. Um, when I'm doing something that feels like I'm inventing and I'm creating something that only I can create. Uh, I feel like it's something that, that, that has an essence of my voice and it reflects what I think is interesting and valuable in the world. Uh, so what, um, what would the best outcome you can imagine look like thinking ahead having yeah, be succeeded with this best outcome i get to do a story exactly the way i like to um and a publisher gives me enough money to live on while i create this story and then becomes a partner with me to help market this book to the audience that i want to read it I think that's a that's a that's a reasonable goal. I didn't say that I want to be rich. I don't I don't want this to be like a New York Times bestseller necessarily. I just want it to be sustainable. And I want I want kids to be able to read it. So what do you think we could talk about today that would help you move you forward toward that? Uh like well, what do you know now that that for sure brings you closer to this? What do I know for sure now that brings me closer to that? Um, oh gosh. Uh, let's see. What do I, what can I measure? You know, it's like, 
is this thing is this thing even true to what I want? Um, how do I how do I know? Like, okay, okay. Um, how do I even know that this thing is driving me crazy? That's making me uh, psychologically wild. Am I crazy about it? Because like, when you're doing the day to day, it's hard to remember what the big picture is, right? Um, so I guess I'm having trouble with being back in touch with that feeling of like, oh, this is the thing that's like, this is my oh, the artist called their baby. This is my baby, right? <laughs> uh, so is that is would that be like thinking through what you could do to get closer to that? Is that what you would like to work on then today? Then get back in touch with what would make you feel like this is your baby and it drives you so like psychologically wild. Yes. And emotional. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. What are you doing already that that's that's uh, helping you get there? What do you mean? What am I doing already? Like, yeah. The, what are you, what are you doing to to get back and right now? Like, what's working that that's helping you feel that? Uh, I feel like the character designs are strong. I feel like the premise is tidy. Um, it's not overwhelmed with too many things that I love. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I feel like the character designs and the premise are really good. Um, I don't necessarily know yet. I guess a, a big point of ambiguity is, um, the, the world building, the designing of, of other elements that exist in the world. Um, I don't, I don't have a clear picture of them in my head yet. And so either something yeah. that you that you have felt this driven wild feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with okay with uh with one of your projects uh yeah with rockets rockets i mean i felt like we were on fire the entire time well not the entire time but for most of the time i felt like we were on fire because uh it felt like we found a really creative way to solve the problem of how to get kids excited about rocket science get to tell all these cool stories about animals, get to design really cool pages that interact with one another in different ways. Um, I felt like I was being a little bit inv inventive as a storyteller. I didn't feel like I was just doing like rote, you know, grid panel layouts of, you know, one moment per panel. I feel like I was, I was celebrating what comics does really well. Um, that all makes me uh, psychologically wild. Right. Um, what what would it look like to do that on this project? Hmm. Well, besides the character designs. Um. Hmm. As in, it could look. It's so. It's in the in your output, perhaps, but in your actions and what you're doing with with your process, your day, your like what it looks like to bring that. Oh, I see. I see. So this being like your, your baby that you're wildly passionate about. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, part of it is, I guess like with rockets, that was, that was basically my full-time job while we were working on that book. Uh, so I had a lot of time capacity that for this um that i don't have with this pitch Whew. so um there's a lot more time to solve the problems for one so is that is that a place where i can like change the the difficulty level right can i add more time uh, um and I guess I guess there was also a little bit more of a feedback loop in there because I was sending stuff to our editor on a regular basis and getting a lot of feedback. Um, 
I'm not sending this material to many of my friends to get a lot of feedback on. I wonder if that's part of the puzzle too. Hmm. Um, there was a sense that like I was getting notes on a regular basis saying, you guys are killing it with this. That was the actual word. I wouldn't use this word. I'm using a quote, right? Like, like this, uh, we got a qu one line that said, this is what the whole science comics line should feel like, right? Like, getting those kind of notes um, made me feel like it, Made me feel like, okay, not only do I really enjoy this, and I feel like I'm doing something that's important and worthwhile, and both Ann and I are laughing while we're writing it, which is always a good sign, but the, the other stakeholders are responding very positively to it as well. Um, so maybe that's part of it too. Maybe it's, it's the sense that um, even though I'm getting reactions from people on the, the Patreon that are supportive and encouraging and thoughtful, um, maybe I need to build in some kind of other mechanisms to give me more reactions to what I'm, I'm putting together while I'm putting it together. What would be the next obvious step to, to, to move ahead with that? It sounds, sounds like a pretty strong idea to, to help you, to help you. So, well, yeah, you know, the next idea would be is to like put together a, uh, an email, that I can send to a couple different friends who I trust and get some feedback on how it looks so far um, and get some reactions to uh, some of the ideas that I've got put together. Um, hmm, okay. Um, do you, so, and you, you let's see, does, does that help? Um, that helps you move toward the, this feeling like that baby you're feeling wildly excited about? I think getting the feedback would, would definitely be one step because that like as I think about like rockets, that was a, a, a big part of that process, getting lots like there's lots of interaction between me, editors, and friends while we were putting the thing together. And because I was working on it with Anne, we were reacting to it together. That's another thing. This is a solo thing. I'm doing this by myself. But then I think the other piece that characterized why Rockets was so good was we had the bandwidth to do it. I was working and I know, I know this isn't the healthiest thing in the world, but we were working like 12, 15 hour days on that thing sometimes, um, which was exhausting at times. But there were other times where it felt like, wow, I just put in eight hours and I didn't even notice it. Right. And having that much time to um, really play with the problems, um, the creative problems that we were facing with that book, um, it felt very satisfying. There was also, let's see, if I were to characterize that, there was also a sense of, we were discovering what we didn't know. There was a lot of research that went into that book, and there was a lot of like just ravenous reading to look for interesting things. Um, so I guess like another thing that I, I could do is make some time outside of the actual production of the pitch to do some reading about adjacent ideas that I'm trying to explore in this pitch to help me connect with the enthusiasm of, of uh, beginner's mind, right? Um, because there are themes that I'm trying to play with in this book that, like, I I feel like are pretty thought through, but I could always read more literature on those subjects, right? Or for some of the world building stuff, I could just like get some books on like Victorian furniture and houses, and read through that to help me, like, not, not only just generate ideas, but just swim in those waters a little bit more with my leisure time. Hmm. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So of the things that you, you talked about, you got a few themes I'm hearing, you know, you, it's like, there's, there's the time aspect, the, your bandwidth availability, um, the not working in a vacuum in a way, this is my paraphrasing. You, you mentioned, you, you know, getting feedback and you mentioned working with someone was nice and uh, that helped, helped you with feeling satisfied. But what, um, of all that, of all that you talked about, like, What's the, so, cause we start, we almost got to the one thing and I just kind of had this, this hunch that like, is like, it, and it just, that's why I asked one more question, right? Because we were almost like traditional coaching session done. And I was like, and, and so I just went there, right? So, but, and you shared more and now do you feel like after you, you shared more and, and you've got all these, these sort of, you know, pieces describing what might be that um, way to ignite feeling that, that this is my baby feeling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
which of these do you see having that the 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 greatest effect the the more i think about it yeah thank you for letting me think this stuff out aloud because i i didn't but by giving me that context of like go back to a thing where you felt like everything was firing on all cylinders you were really psychologically motivated um it took me a while to think through and talk aloud about it but then getting to that idea of like probably some of my happiest memories of working on rockets was going to the library with Anne and just sitting in, like we went to the University of Michigan library, so we couldn't check any books out. So we just sat in the library and just read for hours. Like that was our date night for, you know, eight months. It was like Saturday night, we're going to the library, we're gonna read, read books about rockets. Um, and I remember finding the book where it told the story of Claude Ruggieri attaching parachutes to rats to advertise his fireworks business and being like, Anne, look at this right now, you know, <laughs> like, this is amazing. We got to put this in the book, you know, those kinds of discovery moments made, oh, this is going to sound so lame. Like, like, like 13 year old me is rolling his eyes so hard right now. It's like the, the learning new stuff aspect of making a thing is part of the flavor of making a thing. And I wasn't, I hadn't been considering that. Um, so I think the thing that's going to make this thing feel more exciting to me is if I s set aside some leisure time for research on things that could, could be contributed to this book, whether it's visual design elements, like I was saying, like Victorian architecture, furniture, et cetera, um, getting some books on, you know, demons, spirits, myth, you know, folklore of that nature. Um, and then also getting some, um, some visual research on um, statues because like a sta there's an important statue in this book that I haven't finished designing in a way that I feel satisfied with. So, okay. Research well, it is. Re okay. Um, what's the, what's the one step you can, what's the next logical step you can do to move you toward getting some research going or, or getting, because it sounds not like an event. Like, I'm going to check this box of research off. It sounds like you're starting a bigger thing. But when <laughs> would you get started on this? I would I would actually, I would, what makes sense to me is to write out a list of subjects that I could begin researching on. And then the next step is going to my library and looking for the, we're actually going to the library's website, see if those books are on the shelves at my local library, and then going to my local library uh, this afternoon. This afternoon. That's really awesome so all right that sounds like that's what you're going to do next and that this this is exciting and and uh it's wonderful to be here part of your process and as far as moving forward and whatnot different folks have different interests as far as accountability that's another aspect of coaching so would you like a, a uh a, to to basically text me later or some kind of message and and then do you want any kind of feedback or reaction or high five to that so do you oh. want that touch point and then what kind of result do you want out of that? Gosh, I never considered this. Uh, wow, what what a luxury to be offered. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so, I, I, this is this is the worldview or the world I live in where it's like, I'm gonna do this thing and then I just go do that thing, right? Um, yeah. But like I mentioned, feedback is part of this cycle of what made me enjoy a thing. So yeah, uh, and I'm I'm tempted to want to go to homework. Like, what's my homework? What am I, what, 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 what am I gonna have to show for my time? Like, what can I deliver to you to prove to you that I did this thing, right? <laughs> but it could just be something as simple as I text you a picture of I checked out these five books, right? That makes sense. Different people are wired differently as far as you know, like do, how, how do you engage with feedback? How do you engage mm -hmm. with accountability and commitment, right? So that's mm -hmm. what this last little, little piece of our session is about. So, okay, I'll tell you what I'm, so when you talk about this accountability, it makes me nervous in one way because now I've created a deliverable that I am not confident, confident? I'm not certain that I can deliver on. Why? Because yeah, I can go find a hundred books. doesn't mean I'm going to find anything good in them. Right. So the one thing I can be assured to do is I can find some books, whether or not they, they bear any fruit. We'll see, you know, Anne and I read, I don't know how many books when we made rockets and like 
maybe six to eight really became like the source, the core source material, right? So that makes sense. That's part of the process. And totally is. This is, and it's really it's it's you. It's what you think. Did you did you accomplish that next step? And mm -hmm. then did you want to then share that? as a, as right. a follow-up to this, to this coaching session. So my accountability will be, is that I will write out the list of subjects that I'm going to research. I'm going to go to the library, get those books. And then I'm actually going to make a Patreon post about that research based on wow. this discussion that we had. There we go. That's my accountability is I will, I will, I will document this part of the journey as part of my 31 day challenge. Well, that sounds awesome. So how do you feel about your session today? Do you think you got got to a, a useful outcome? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like sometimes it's, it's, it, it, I thought I knew what was bugging me and I didn't until I talked it through. Right. Um, I thought it was just, just feeling tired about the grind, um, which is part of it, but realizing that like there's more to being excited about a project than just the act of doing it and the act of creating something. Um, yeah. That, that beginner's mind thing is, is kind of an important piece of the puzzle. That's something I should hang on to and build into every new project that I do to help keep that enthusiasm cycle going. Um, but I imagine, like you were saying, this is going to be different for everybody, for each and every individual, right? Like, like what's the getting at what's the recipe or what is the characterization of when it's all going good? Um, yeah, absolutely. So what's um, so what I've been been you know uh, training and honing in is this this sure this this coaching method that we we explored. But then as far as like what you pull out of that, that is that's you. Like you've. Some folks after a co after a coaching session are surprised. Like I talked a lot, and you're the coach, so right. It's kind of weird, <laughs> and it's it's not. Uh, it's imagine if you could have another part of your brain fully present and listening to everything you're saying, and their your process of putting it into words, and someone else's process of hearing those words is a mechanism that helps thoughtfully navigate conundrums, decisions, puzzles, what have you. And yeah, you're doing pretty much all the work. And the coach is, 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 so that's the, the coach aspect of it, a brief commentary. But then as far as like where, where you're going with, um, you know, like, you know, it's spinning out and then how do you, you fire up again and what have you. Um, it's almost like by choosing to set this up as part of the episode, like a lot of times when we talk about like nurturing and self-care or whatnot, it's sort of like, um, uh, process or project triage, right? Of like, well, what music do you like? And uh, that kind of thing, you know, do something nice for yourself. And that, that's important too. But then yeah. some things ha are, are a deeper um, like circumstantial choice puzzle that you can probably make different arrangements as far as how you're engaging with the thing you're engaging and, um, and then, and we navigated that and I had no idea where this was going to go. Cause that's the other aspect of coaching is I'm not trying to impose and propose or prescribe or consult and say like, Jersey, you didn't hand me your problem and say like, now you're the thinker or designer or whatever on this, that didn't happen. That's a fine process too. That happens. We collaborate in lots of different, whatever ways in, in how all of us get things done in our different mm -hmm. jobs and, and projects. But with the coaching, it's not that. It's still your problem. <laughs> and, right. and so we navigated it in a way that was about how you were thinking about it. It's funny. I, I have a friend that I talk with on a regular basis who often will say to me, thank you for giving me the space to think about that out loud. And like, and like, I listen to this person, like they came to their own conclusion. They solved their own problem through talk just, and me just being present and reacting, like reacting with like one word, two words at a time. In, in, in the, those moments, I remember feeling like, yeah, I really didn't do much, but you're right. There is something to being uh, a third party who is reacting to, and, and like giving visual feedback to like, what, what are you, how are you processing this? Um, it's 
entirely adjacent and related to why do we why do we celebrate journaling so much on our show why do we keep bringing yeah. that back up because in a way yeah. you can be your own third party you can be that other perspective if you're giving yourself some mechanism to get perspective on your own thoughts yeah i gotta say i i think i think i'm very grateful for the the understanding that there's more to this thing for me at least than just making and shipping um you know i've been ann and i've been doing a talk uh all over the place about rockets we do this little workshop slash presentation and one of the things we talk about is the joy of learning new stuff in order to make this particular book for some reason i thought that that was encapsulated in that discrete project because it was a project where we had to learn so much new stuff in order to make it but now that I'm thinking about it, I think that that's baked into everything that I do is like I got a like part of the flavor of, of 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 the making of the thing is the learning something that I didn't know before, um, acquiring some new knowledge. Um, and that's going to happen through the making of the thing, like just like the skill acquisition of drawing over and over again. But um, but also the the subject matter, intellectual stuff, too. Um, so that's cool. That was fun. Thanks for, for letting me be, be here for this uh, this process. That's cool. Uh, so we got to take one more break and then uh, maybe see if we can find a final thought in there someplace. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Okay. So, um, gosh, we'll be back in about a minute and a half to two minutes uh, to conclude with final thought. But before we do that, we have to thank some other people who make this show possible. Those people happen to be us. We make the show possible. We make all sorts of stuff. And then we interact with the stuff that we make and bring those thoughts to the show, just like we did today. Uh, and the thing that I made recently that I hope you will check out if you haven't already is Boulder and Fleet Mining for Trouble, which you can find at books.jdros.com. That'll take you to the Indie Planet uh, store for my books that I published there, self-published there. And the book Mining for Trouble is a 92-page graphic novel-ish, graphic novella, whatever you want to call it. It's a comic book. And in it, a bear and a bird go on adventures together, try to help people, and they wind up getting embroiled in this battle with these mineral girls, these, these girls, these bandits, who are stone creatures who live off of eating precious metals. So of course they took over a mine and so that they could just like, you know, raid the raid the stores and and uh, live off of all the precious metals. Uh, and uh, the the bird, you know, has no problem using physical violence in order to solve our problems, but the bear doesn't like to hurt people. He'd rather make friends. And so he tries to find peaceful solutions. That becomes kind of di difficult when you're facing a gal who can shoot crystals out of cannons on her arms. Once again, it's at books.jdrozd.com. Now, you just witnessed a coaching session with Rob on the show, and that leads to the segue to shieldstenzinger.com. What is shieldstenzinger.com, Rob? Well, it's a coaching business that uh, my wife, Kate Shields Stenzinger, and I started. And uh, each of us is a coach, and we provide uh, a, a service a lot like we just demonstrated on, on the show. Honestly, it's, it's, it's about navigating decisions when you have something that, I mean, every one of us gets in our own way at some times where there's some opportunity or there's multiple things going on, and which, which path is the option? Which which thing do you want to uh, work on first to move yourself forward and where are you going and all that? And navigating that with a coach is a different kind of experience. It is, it is an upgrade and, and it can be a, um, like a, a, well, it's, it is a helpful service essentially. And it's, it's not like, it's not counseling. It's not, you know, therapy, what have you. It's, it's coaching and it's, it's its own thing. And um, so if, whether you as an individual are thinking like, oh yeah, this could help me with my professional development, my creative project or what have you, or, uh, you know, hey, maybe you and your uh, significant other are into like starting a business or one of you is and one of you, and, and you're, you're working on your together things and then your, your business thing or what have you. So Kate focuses on that, helping, um, you know, couples navigate that kind of thing. I focus on, um, especially folks, you know, making products and how do you create positive change and all that kind of stuff individually and collectively. So there's a lot that a coach can bring a group of people as well. And if you want to learn more about it, you can set up a free, uh, free session. Um, just go ahead and book one now. Just go to um, an easy URL uh, for my coaching is just robcoach.me. 
easy to memorize. And then uh, just book a discovery session. You can learn if I'm a fit for you and what the coaching thing feels like firsthand. You got to witness Jersey go through it. Well, no, you, you can feel what that's like on your own. You can do the same kind of thing setting up a session with Kate as well. Uh, she, her easy URL is mycoachkate.com. Robcoach.me and mycoachkate.com. Did I get that right? That's okay. right. Okay, great. And then the final thing we want to point you guys at that we make is, well, we didn't make it, but we manage it. There, Lean Into Art has a Discord now. We have a Discord server. So you can, uh, you know, there will be a link in the show notes for this episode, the invite links you can join. Um, there are public places to post work. You can do topic requests or comment on episodes, follow up on episodes. Please name the episode that you're following up on. And then we introduced a new channel in there called Challenge Quests. So if you're doing like any of the creative challenges this month, you can uh, pr contribute them there. Also, you know, uh, we got Art Sound Off coming up. That'd be a good place to post them as well. And then for Patreon supporters, there are three private channels. There is Castle Level Up, where you can post work in progress that you're struggling with, getting some feedback from the leaners. I recently posted uh, a panel that I wasn't crazy about there and got some good feedback from the fellow leaners. And then there's Gentle Town. If you're just looking for a high five from somebody, like, hey, look, I made a thing and I'm really happy with it. Somebody tell me that this is good too. You know, it's it's not wrong to ask for a high five. So you can post that uh, stuff there. And then there's even just a social channel where it's like, hey, this is something I'm just doing today. Look at this. Isn't this an awesome sandwich? Uh, the Lean Into Art Discord. Um, six channels, three, four Patreon supporters and three that are public. And thanks to everybody who has been interacting with us uh, on the Discord. It's been fun. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a great experiment, and it's been going well. All right, final thought time. What are we thinking for final thought? Anything? Well, let's see. So, we we navigated. Um, like you, you did like just the huge. I don't, I'm not gonna. Whatever. I'm gonna compliment you a tiny bit. Okay. I think it's 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 awesome that you. Um, just did that modeling, being vulnerable and brave to just go through that whole, um, yeah, here's the thing. Normally I like to show up and not add like, cause I feel it's very similar and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but you want to show up and bring some kind of positive tool to be like, look at, mm -hmm. I found an idea. Guess what? It's a magic sword to go solve problems. Boom. It's, it's an idea sword. So it's free for everybody. Whoa. Keep moving. I got other stuff. See you later. And then keep going and then the next one next one next and keep doing that and that kind of sharing feels awesome and then it's harder to do the other kind of sharing because honestly you know why is it harder there you go that's the final thought yeah why is it harder um so i'm tempted to say that it it looks like a lack of competence which i don't think i'm quite as worried about these days i feel like i have enough evidence behind me to show that i have competence um in in what i'm doing as a at least as a cartoonist <laughs> i'm not going to profess confidence in any other field but I'm, I'm a competent cartoonist right um so i don't think it's that as much i think i am I, again very personally if we want to examine this 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 question on a personal level i am very worried about wasting people's time uh, I am very, and, and I said this, I can't remember if I talked about this in the show or not, but I was in a, um, a workshop, uh, with, um, oh gosh, it was at the Billy Ireland. What was the name of the cartoonist now? I'm blanking on her name. I got her book in the other room. doesn't matter. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, and it was, it was a, uh, a, a cartoonist who specializes in writing autobiographical, um, so, so graphic medicine topics like dealing with like mental illness or pain or well in, in her case she wrote a, a book about losing her baby sister uh, and finding out that she had a baby sister that she never knew about um and like really trying to help us navigate like how do we bring more of our personal biographies into our work and she was asking us like what, what's stopping you what's what's holding you up what is keeping you from moving forward on these projects and everybody's given their different reasons and she got to me and i said i am not confident that I know the difference between making art and crying publicly, right? It's very difficult for me to navigate that 
And, and it's something that I'm going to keep working on. It's something that I feel like hopefully I'll get better at understanding what the difference is for me. Like, when do I feel like I'm crying publicly? When do I feel like I'm making art? And I think the same thing is true when I'm sharing vulnerability is that um, am I just complaining or am I sharing this in a way that helps other people? So if somebody else is going through this too, they could say, oh, thank goodness, at least I'm not alone on this. Or even better, the way you process that gave me some ideas for how I can process my own difficulties in this particular realm, right? Um, it's very important to me that what I do has some utility in some way. And that could be a shortcoming, right? I, I admit that that might be something that keeps me from moving forward with a lot of other stuff. But um, I know that I feel um, a lot of hesitation before sharing difficult parts of the journeys for that reason. So I don't want, I don't ever want to feel like I just turn to an audience and say like, man, this is hard. <laughs> 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 Did you know this is hard? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Oh. I mean, on, on some level, that can seem sort of, um, I don't know, we can self-evident and assumed. We all have our own our own challenges. And But then again, some people, we've said this dating back to the first lean into art. Some people are really good at that, where it's like, uh, they've, they've got their ups and downs and they can perform with that well like i don't feel particularly social when i'm having particular like, big up big downs at the very least even big ups it's weird yeah. like i've i like in 2008 i deleted a tweet where i was at an iron maiden concert because i was like too woo in public yeah you know yeah. and it wasn't a big i wasn't i was not intoxicated i was it was just like it just i was like i don't does anyone care about this i don't know and i deleted it right yeah so. yeah uh, so any we, extreme, we, I start well, work. Yeah, we, we both think a lot about who's going to hear what we're saying, who's going to interact with it. Um, yeah, for better or worse. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's something I'm still processing, but yeah, I guess did I answer the question? Like, why is it hard to share that part of it? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard if I feel like I haven't processed it enough to make it transmittable by my standards. So, because I also like when other people have said, like, like I work with students all the time and they turn to me and be like, this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is, you know, like, I, but I'm not going to be like, yeah, dummy. Yeah. Why are you saying that stupid? Why are you being so dumb saying that it's hard? Of course it's hard. <laughs> right. Like, which is an yeah. interesting situation. So now you're pointing out how you believe in it being safe and okay for it to be hard. It's not that yeah. like no one gets a hard time. Shut up. <laughs> You know, right, right. I don't get a hard time. You don't, nobody. That's, that's silly. And because we, and we talk about that all the time. It's just that <laughs> the, uh, but it's, um, pain does not exist in this dojo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it does, but we don't acknowledge it. Right. The, it doesn't fit on the sign. <laughs> it doesn't fit on the sign. We ran out of room for pain. <laughs> Yeah. So I don't, so yeah. Okay. I think for me, it's, it's the, um, finding the constructive purpose behind it. Right. Mm -hmm. I do not wish to cause unintentional triggering or pain to anyone by sharing my pain. Right. And that's, that's why I'm like, I know I've got a version of this somewhere that turn, turns into art. So I'm just going to go back and see, see in a bit, see in a bit when I got some art or whatever. Yeah. See you in a bit when I got some art. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that almost feels like a good closing for the show. <laughs> See you in a bit when I got some art. Um, all right. Well, I think we did a podcast. Yeah, I think so, too. Thanks, Jersey. Cool. Thank you, Rob. Uh, all right. We record the show weekly Thursdays at noon Eastern time, uh, 11 a.m. Central. And we stream it live at uh, twitch.tv slash lean into art. And we collect that as a podcast at lean into art.com and patreon.com slash lean into art. We'll be back with another episode soon. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of lean into art.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. 
And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger on Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.